Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the different image sensors which are used in digital cameras and the modern day smartphones. So we will also learn how this image sensor works and at the end we will compare these image sensors in terms of the different aspects. So two types of imaging sensors which are quite commonly used in the imaging are CCD which is the charge coupled device and the CMOS that is complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So both the type of sensor consist of millions of photocytes or a pixels. So these photocytes converts the incoming light into the charge or a electron. So although these two sensors are quite different, but they are common in many aspects. So these are the following steps which is being followed in both the sensors. So this sensor first of all convert the incoming light into the charge. So the photocytes or the pixels are exposed to the light for a certain amount of time. And during this time the charge will get collected in these pixels. So once the charge is being collected by this pixel, this charge is transferred for the further processing and after transfer, this charge is converted into the voltage and this voltage is being amplified using the amplifiers. So these are the common steps which you see in both the sensors, but depending on the sensor, the sequence might vary. So now let us first of all understand how this charge coupled device or CCD works. So as I said earlier, this CCD consists of millions of pixels. So as these pixels are exposed to the incoming light, these pixels will convert the incoming light into the charge and the charge will get accumulated in these pixels. So once the charge is getting collected by these pixels, this charge is being transferred using this horizontal shift register and this charge is being transferred into the vertical shift register. So in this shift register, one by one, each charge is being converted into the voltage and after the voltage conversion, each voltage is being amplified using the amplifier. So once the vertical shift register gets emptied, the same procedure is followed for the remaining charge and one by one, each charge is getting converted into the voltage and after that it is being amplified. So once the charge of each pixel is converted into the voltage and amplified, the output signal is being converted into the digital form using the analog to digital converter. So in this way, one by one, the charge of each pixel is getting converted into the voltage and the same procedure is repeated for the next frame. So this is the basic principle of the charge coupled device. Now let us similarly see how this CMOS sensor works. So in case of the CMOS sensor, the fabrication technology is very similar to the fabrication technology of the integrated circuits. So because of that, many peripheral circuits can be integrated inside the single chip. So in case of the CMOS sensor, the charge to voltage conversion as well as the voltage amplification is carried out in the pixel itself. And as the charge to voltage conversion and the amplification is carried out in the pixel itself, so the processing speed of the CMOS sensor will be much higher than the CCD sensors. So in case of the CMOS sensor, the voltage that is generated by each pixel is being read in a line by line fashion. So first of all, the first row of the pixel is being activated using this pixel select switch. So this pixel select switch connects this output voltage of this pixel to the column line. And by activating the column select switch one by one, we can read the data of each pixel and the same procedure is repeated for the remaining lines. So in this way, in case of the CMOS sensor, the data is being read in a line by line fashion. So this is the overview of how CMOS sensor works. So now as we have understood how this CCD and the CMOS sensor works, now let us compare these two technologies. So first let us compare these two sensors in terms of the system integration. So this charge coupled device or the CCD is very old technology. So in this technology, it is not possible to integrate the peripheral components like timers and EDC into the main sensor. So for this peripheral circuits, you will require the additional chip. So the overall size of the CCD sensor will get large. While in case of the CMOS sensor, as the fabrication procedure is very similar to the fabrication procedure of the integrated circuit, it is possible to integrate this peripheral components into the single chip. So in case of the CMOS sensor, it is possible to have a camera on chip or a system on chip. And because of that, the CMOS sensor is quite compact. Now let us compare these two sensors in terms of this power consumption. So in case of this CCD sensor, we require the different types of power supplies for the different timing clocks. And not only that, the typical voltages which is being required for the CCD is in the range of 7 to 10 volt. So the overall power consumption of the CCD sensor will be high. While in case of the CMOS sensor, it requires the single power supply. And not only that, the typical voltage 
which is required for the CMOS sensor is relatively low that is 3.3 volt to 5 volt. So overall power consumption of the CMOS sensor will be lesser compared to the CCD sensors. So in the applications where the power consumption is the main criteria in such scenario the CMOS sensor is preferred over the CCD sensors. Now let us compare these two sensors in terms of the processing speed. So as I said earlier in case of the CCD sensor the charge that is generated in each pixel is converted into the voltage one by one. So overall processing speed of the CCD sensor will be lesser compared to the CMOS sensor. But this processing speed can be further increased by using the multiple shift register. So in this way by doing the parallel processing we can increase the processing speed of this CCD sensor. But in this case we will require the additional amount of hardware while in case of the CMOS sensor as we have seen the charge to voltage conversion is carried out in the same pixel. So the processing speed of the CMOS sensor will be higher compared to these CCD sensors and further we can increase the speed of this CMOS sensor by using the multiple column select lines. So in this way by doing the parallel processing we can further increase the speed of this CMOS sensor. Now let us compare these two sensors in terms of the noise and the sensitivity. So as we have seen in the case of the CMOS sensor the charge to voltage converter circuit as well as the amplification circuit is integrated in the same pixel. So overall field factor of the CMOS sensor will be less compared to the CCD sensor and because of that the sensitivity of the CMOS sensor will be less compared to the CCD sensor. And because of that dynamic range of this CCD sensor is quite high compared to this CMOS sensor. And not only that in case of the CMOS sensor the amplifiers which is being used in each pixel is not identical. So because of that you will see the non-uniform amplification and that will act as an additional noise. But now the technology of this CMOS sensor has evolved so much that the noise and the sensitivity of the CMOS sensor is almost at par with this CCD sensors. Alright so now let us compare this image sensor in terms of this image distortion. So in case of the CCD sensor when you expose this sensor for the longer time then you will see the effect that is known as the blooming. So nowadays by using this anti-blooming technique we can reduce this blooming. While in case of the CMOS sensor the most common type of distortion that is to be known is the rolling shutter. So as we have seen earlier in the case of the CMOS sensor the pixels are being read in the line by line fashion. So because of that whenever any fast moving object is being captured by the CMOS sensor then this rolling shutter effect is quite noticeable. Like here as you can see in the case of this helicopter the wing of this helicopter is straight but when it is being captured by this CMOS sensor then it looks like it is having a curvature. So that effect is known as the rolling shutter effect. While in case of the CCD sensor all the pixels are getting exposed at the same time. So this effect is not seen in the case of a CCD sensors. So if we want to remove this rolling shutter effect in the CMOS sensors then all the pixels should be get exposed at the same time which is known as the global shutter. So nowadays many of the CMOS sensors are also coming with this global shutter. So as we have seen when we require the fast processing speed as well as the low power consumption in such cases the CMOS sensors are preferred over the CCD sensors. While in applications where you require the high dynamic range and the low amount of noise like a space application in such cases the CCD sensors are preferred over this CMOS sensor. So I hope in this video you understood about the different types of image sensors. So if you have any question or suggestion please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.